Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Today's message is titled, The Final Seven Years Draws Near. Now, why is this video titled, The Final Seven Years Draws Near? Am I saying the world is going to end in seven years? Absolutely not. What I am saying is that the event that will start a countdown, a seven-year countdown to the return of Jesus Christ when he touches down on the Mount of Olives to establish his 1,000-year millennial reign, that event is rapidly approaching. Now, the rapture of the church will occur before this event occurs to start this final seven-year countdown to the return of Jesus Christ. Now, what is the event I'm referring to that will start this seven-year countdown? You can find it right in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27. Let's read the first part together. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And he, that's referring to the future Antichrist who has not been revealed yet. He will not be revealed until after the rapture of the church. And he the future Antichrist shall confirm. The original translation of that word uh, confirm simply means, you know, great or to make greater or strengthen the covenant with many for one week. This is referring to a week of years, a seven year time frame. So when the time comes after the rapture of the church, the future, the future Antichrist will make something greater. He's going to strengthen something that's already been brought out. And it's going to involve Israel and many, the surrounding enemies of Israel. It's going to involve them. And it will be a seven-year covenant. But once the Antichrist confirms the covenant with the many for one week or seven years, that will start the seven-year countdown to the return of Jesus Christ. And then also when you go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 15, we read, Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So when the time comes, the future Antichrist will confirm great or to great, uh, make greater or strengthen the covenant with many for one week, seven years. What's going to be brought out? It's going to look good. It's going to smell good to Israel and the many. But this is going to be a false peace. It's going to be a covenant with death. If you've been following my channel ever since I started this channel, one of the things I've said is keep your eyes on Emmanuel Macron. Because he is going to play a huge role in being a huge part of this peace process, of laying the groundwork for this coming Daniel 9, 27 covenant. Now, I am not saying Emmanuel Macron is the Antichrist. And quite frankly, I am not looking for the Antichrist on this channel. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Because the Antichrist will be revealed after the rapture of the church. However, Emmanuel Macron is playing a huge role in laying the groundwork for this coming Daniel 9, 27 covenant. You can't make this stuff up, folks. I just came across this today from the Times of Israel. Listen to this. Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, and Macron, Emmanuel Macron, will meet to focus on Iran and pay very close attention to this next word, expanding Abraham Accords. Again, Netanyahu and Macron will meet to focus on Iran and expanding or making greater the Abraham Accords. Let me read some of this to you. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office announces that he will discuss stopping Iran's nuclear program during his meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron this week, 
in Paris. They will also discuss ways to expand the Abraham Accords as France has shown interest in playing a larger role in the Middle East. The two leaders, referring to Netanyahu and Macron, uh, let, last met in Jerusalem in January of 2020. Netanyahu will be in France Thursday, today, until Saturday. So the next couple days they're going to be meeting, discussing Iran and also expanding or making greater the Abraham Accords. This is the same Emmanuel Macron who appeared on uh, this version of The Economist magazine with the title of Europe Savior? Question mark. And it shows Emmanuel Macron walking on water uh, with a lady's feet uh, hanging out of the water there. This is the same Emmanuel Macron who appeared on the cover of Time magazine with the title of The Next Leader of Europe. This is also the same Emmanuel Macron who during uh, the presidency of former President Donald Trump, when Trump was uh, saying he's going to bring forth the deal of the century, uh, Macron had said this, this is from the Times of Israel uh, a couple years ago. He said he had a peace plan of his own if Trump didn't soon reveal his. The title of this article was Macron to unveil peace plan soon if Trump doesn't. This is also the same Emmanuel Macron who stated the following, I will govern like a Roman god. French President Emmanuel Macron has declared he will govern France like Jupiter, the Roman king of the gods. So Macron and Netanyahu are currently meeting the next couple of days in France to discuss expanding the Abraham Accords. Now, why is this absolutely huge? And it should make you excited if you know your Bible and end times eschatology. Well, here's, let me tell you about the Abraham Accords. Israel became a nation May 14th, 1948. Um, there was two peace treaties made with Israel between 1948 and 2020. Uh, there was the Israel-Egypt peace treaty, which we saw in 1979. Then there was the Israel-Jordan peace treaty, which occurred in 1994. Then if you fast forward to 2020, then comes the Abraham Accords. Uh, former President Donald Trump on the White House lawn has a signing ceremony on September 15th. 2020. So we see Israel, Bahrain, and the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, sign the Abraham Accords in a single day, September 15th, 2020, on the White House lawn. Again, up until this time, only two uh, countries, Israel and or, uh, Egypt and Jordan, had made peace treaties with Israel. And now in a single day, on the White House lawn, we see Bahrain and the UAE jump aboard the peace train and sign the Abraham Accords. And then shortly after this, Morocco joins the Abraham Accords. And now we're hearing reports that Sudan is about to officially join the Abraham Accords. And other countries are saying in the coming weeks and months, they plan on joining the Abraham Accords as well. Do you see what's happening here, folks? This is building and it's building fast and many are jumping aboard the Abraham Accords. Many is important because we know, according to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15, that the future Antichrist will confirm the covenant and is going to involve many, Israel and the surrounding enemies of Israel. So we have two peace treaties made uh, with Egypt and Jordan, 1979 and in 1994, and then just in a single day, September 15th, 2020, on the White House lawn, you see the UAE and Bahrain uh, sign the Abraham Accords. Then Morocco joins. And now you're starting to see all these other countries saying they're going to jump aboard. This is becoming many folks. folks. And what did Macron say? His whole mission on meeting Netanyahu is talking about Iran and expanding the Abraham Accords, making it greater. Emmanuel Macron is getting more involved and saying France is going to be getting more involved in the peace process. Folks, we are racing full speed toward the final seven years, the coming seven-year tribulation period. We see the groundwork being laid right now with the Abraham Accords getting many on board to make peace with Israel. When the rapture occurs, the Antichrist will be revealed after that. He will make order out of chaos 
and he will confirm the covenant with many. And once that occurs, once the Antichrist confirms, he makes greater something, most likely possibly the Abraham Accords, or something else will be brought forth involving many. And once the Antichrist strengthens, uh, makes it greater with Israel and the surrounding enemies, that will start the seven-year countdown uh, to the return of Jesus Christ when he touches down on the Mount of Olives and establishes his 1,000-year millennial reign. If we see the shadow of the tribulation, the shadow of the seven-year covenant being confirmed, and we know the rapture of the church needs to occur first, how close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. And if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on a lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell is a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now, because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming, and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up, keep watching with me, and God bless you all.